My name is Andrea Tufola. I'm State House Representative for District 43, starting in Maili and ending in Eva. Today, I decided to get out with city officials and get my hands dirty talking about sewage and storm drains. There are so many calls that come to my office regarding pollution and many people wanting the Ulehava stream clean. And I wanted to learn more from city officials about how we can get involved with making sure the public is aware of what should go down the sewage pipes and what should not be thrown in the storm water, which is Ulehava Street. So we hope you enjoy this episode of Bringing It Back to the People, Dirty Jobs Edition. to do is show people firsthand what it looks like, what a clogged pump station looks like, and what we can do on our part to become more educated mm -hmm. so that we know that storm water needs to be taken care of because that's our oceans, that's yes. our water, yes. and that the sewage water also needs to be taken care of so that these pump stations can adequately clean mm -hmm. without us flushing or putting things down the drain mm -hmm. that aren't supposed to be there. All right. Um, well, I am a Kamehameha graduate, 13 years senior, Iwa. yes, and then I went to the University of Hawaii and I received a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, but I'm a licensed civil engineer. I've been with the city since 2005. Um, I used to run the wastewater division in charge of the sewer system, and then I worked at under Peter Carlisle on the Department of Design and Construction, and then when Kirk Caldwell came in, he asked me to head the Department of Environmental Services. And the Department of Environment, Environmental Services is one of the largest departments in the city. Uh, we have over a thousand employees. Our operating budget and capital improvement budget are about $250 million each. We operate and maintain all of the sewer systems. So there's about 2,100 miles of sewer lines on Oahu that we operate and maintain. We have nine treatment plants and we have about 70 pump stations. And we also are in charge of the refuse division. So all of the trash, the recycling, the landfill, age power, that all falls under E and B. But for the sewage, I mean, what does the public need to know about keeping that clean? I mean, I've heard you guys have huge backups of, I don't know, flushable wipes and <sighs> plastic bags. Yes, flushable wipes are our nemesis. So really? Why do they call it flushable wipes? <laughs> I know, we're Who came up with that? With the manufacturers. You know, and so they don't flush. They, they, they flush, they don't break down. Mm. That's the difference. And so really, the only thing that should go into the sewers is number one, number two, and toilet paper. And that's it. You know, even the... Not to get too disgusting, but the feminine hygiene product. That shouldn't go in. It shouldn't go in. You okay. have to dispose of it. You know, in our restrooms, we have um, the, this proper way to dispose of it, but only number one, number two, and toilet paper. City. And so we went downstairs and we looked at the different pumps. And what kind of stuff do you guys pull out every day? We pull out just about baby wipes, uh, underwear. Just don't want anything that kids flushed on the floor. What, what are some of the suggestions you have in regards to the the sewage? Like, I mean, I know we could put those little drain caps to yes. catch hair, right? Yes, yes. Um, that's the, the, probably the best solution. Um, I personally, I collect my hair and then I stick it on the wall. And then after I'm showering, you take it off and throw it away. Right? Yes. We've been going into the schools and trying to um, give them some resources. We're planning on doing a big push for the Anatomy of Wastewater book for the kids and also helping them learn about the three P's, paper, pee, and poop. It's the only things that should go into the sewer system. And we're not talking about paper towels, we're talking about toilet paper, right? Yes. So three P's, pee, poop, and toilet paper. So we educate them. Right. We'll send them flyers, we'll send inspectors out to their home and say, you know, even grease. Grease is a major... Um, <gasps> with grease? Practice. What are you supposed to do with grease? <laughs> Let's tell yeah. the public. <laughs> okay. Nothing goes down the drain. So let's say you're cooking bacon and you have all the oil in the pan. Let it cool, wipe it up, and throw it in your trash. Nothing goes down the storm. I mean, the, the sewer system. When you send it down your sink, when it's hot, 
when it cools, it becomes solid. Yeah. And now, not only is it blocking your pipes, but it comes and blocks our pipes also. So grease. It looks is like attached. it's disposable because it's correct. Liquid, but then it, it hardens. It hardens. So now we've learned that with hair, get a little drain <laughs> cover. With oil, put it in a cup, yes. in a jar, somewhere where it hardens, yes. and then throw it away. Correct. Like don't put correct. it in while it's hot. Just FYI. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let the thing cool down right. and then right. throw it away. Correct. Water Quality Branch. He is the head for the city and county of Honolulu. So what are we looking at here in the Ulihava stream? Right now we're looking at the Ulihava Channel, the West Branch, right along Princess Kahanu Avenue. And what we're probably seeing is right now there's a lot of, this channel is meant for drainage purposes to convey the storm water. As it's raining, it's going to uh, capture the water, convey it to the streams and into the ocean. Uh, so what you can see here though that there's a lot of impacts that affect it where human impacts where people are putting in trash, a lot of debris, you see a lot of plastic bottles, glass bottles and other other, other type of trash um, and that's one of the big pro biggest problems we have um, is that keeping that material out of the, the streams and channels because a lot of this when it's conveying the water it doesn't actually treat it so once it's put into the channels and into the streams it goes directly into the ocean into the beaches that we use to recreate. The storm drains there's about 800 miles of that that's collecting all of the runoff from the streets goes into the catch basins and it goes straight to the streams and ocean no treatment whatsoever so it's extremely important that people understand two separate systems wastewater gets treated before it goes into the ocean streams i mean the storm drains not so it goes straight into the streams into the oceans that we swim in as we start getting the message out to people they realize oh this is going straight into the ocean which is where we go to the beaches and we swim with our families so when you wash your car, the soap, the detergent straight into the ocean. That's how you need to think. If you're littering, you're throwing out your cigarette butts, um, you're changing your oil on the street, all of that goes into the streams and goes into the ocean. So we're, we're starting to educate people more and more, and that's why I think we've seen a, um, an increase in awareness and Cleanliness. Oh, that's good to know. Yes. I know that you guys spray painted, um, you know, the yes. little no dumping and a little picture yes. of a fish. Has yes. it been working? It has. It yeah. has. And it's not just ENV city staff that are doing the stenciling. It's the communities. So as the communities start to think, they're stenciling it themselves. They let their neighbors know. They let their kids know. And the community knows. So I think more awareness will always help. What about with washing cars? So since it goes into the drain, I mean, what would you suggest for people to do? Like put their car in the grass? I've seen Absolutely. people do that. That's the key right there. Put it in the grassy area so the water, water runoff goes and stays on your property. It doesn't run off into the storm drains. Wow. And if you have to, for some reason, you don't have a grassy area, then don't use soap. You have to use just water or take it to a, a car wash because the car wash is actually captures the water. I see. And I do field a lot of calls on pollution, but really the branch that's over it is the city and secondly DFM. But again, remember that DFM is over the roads, the streets, streets storm, drains. storm drains. And so we have a lot that's on their plate that we're trying to clean up. And so I think bringing awareness to the people that this is not the place where you should put mattresses and bikes. That's correct. Because it goes straight out to the ocean. This is something that the public needs to be aware of that these storm drains such as Ulehava Stream are not meant for materials that should go to the refuse center. Wrapping up here, do you have any other um, I guess suggestions for the viewers. Wow, I learned so much in such a short <laughs> period of time. No, if I could just reiterate, sewers, down your toilet, your sinks, your 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 shower, it's only number one, number two, and toilet paper. That is it. And on the storm drain side, just remember whatever you're throwing on the road or in the canal, the streams, it's going straight to the oceans untreated. So, so be careful what you put in the gutters. Correct. Don't just throw anything in the, the gutters. Trash, right. Your trash does not go in the gutter. Your soap from washing your car does yes. not go in the gutter. Yes. Wash your car on the grass. Yes. Your hair does not go down the drain. Oil mm -hmm. does not go down the drain. So thank you so much thank for your time, you. Dr. Kahikina. Thank you. Good luck with everything you're doing Me here. Too. I'm sure we'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, we'll see you guys.